Shout with joy to God on the earth. Sing to the glory of his name. Offer him glory and praise. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Sing to the glory of his name. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Devoratorium. My name is Darnay Devore, and I'm going to be your host. On today's episode, do you know where the fight is? Now, let me ask you this. What do you do when you prepare yourself for a fight? Let's say it's a boxing match. How do you prepare yourself for a boxing match? Well, obviously, you got to know how to box. You got to work on your defense. You got to work on your offense, right? You got to work on your footwork, your endurance, your conditioning, but you also have to have the right gloves, the right boxing gloves for this particular fight, right? So you train, you train, but you train yourself to win, not to lose. That's what we all do when we prepare for a battle. Now, what if it's a sword fight? What do you got to do then? You've got to first figure out what kind of sword fight. Are you going to use those thick broad swords, all right, where one swing spins your whole body around? Or are you going to use a smaller, thinner sword they use in fencing? Okay, which one are you going to use? Then you got to learn how to defend. You've got to learn how to uh, get your offense right. You got to get your footwork down. All this goes into training yourself for a sword fight. What if it's a gunfight? You're going to bring your sword? You're going to bring your boxing gloves? Nah, you need a gun, obviously, for a gun fight. Now, is it a uh, face to face? Is it a sharpshooter event? Once again, you've got to figure out which weapon you're going to have to use, which gun, which type of uh, gun that you're going to use. You got to make sure your eyes are good enough to see the target. So all these things go into these type of fights, these type of battles. Every fight has a weapon required for that fight. Now, what about injustice on our city streets? How do you prepare for that kind of a battle? All right. Do you bring your boxing gloves again? Do you bring your sword? Do you bring a gun? Or do you protest? What do you do in that case when you have social injustice on our city streets? How about a war of nations? That's an even bigger fight. How do you prepare yourself for a war of nations? Now you bring out the big guns. You bring out the tanks, the jets. You bring out the battleships. You bring out all this heavy artillery. You don't go get your boxing gloves, do you? No, because boxing gloves don't work in this fight against nations. What if it's a fight you can't see? A fight you can't see or touch. What about a fight like that? That's what the Bible calls a spiritual fight, a spiritual war. If this is a fight you can't see and you can't touch, so how do you fight it? First of all, let me prove that it exists. Look outside your window, okay? Or watch the evening news one glance when we look at our world let alone our own nation, we see that we are in a spiritual war of evil. There's all this evil that goes around and it perpetuates itself again and again and again. Proving that it's spiritual once again, what color is evil? Hmm? What, what color is evil? What, how tall is evil? What does evil sound like when it speaks? Is evil male or female? All those are character, uh, their physical characteristics of evil that don't apply because evil is not a physical being. Evil is spiritual. Every face or every nation you can think of when you think of what is evil, you're only thinking of a representative of evil, not evil itself. So whether you go back in history and you see Vlad the Impaler, you see Jack the Ripper, you see Hitler, you see Emperor Nero, you see Joseph Stalin, I don't care if it's white slave masters, whoever you see is only representing evil because when they died, did evil die? No, it didn't. What about the evil that they represented, whether it's oppressing people or whether it's genocidal murder? Did that evil die when those individuals died? No, they didn't. The evil continues on to this day because they were only representing evil. They are not evil incarnate. That includes anyone you can think of even to this day. So no matter how many times justice is served, okay, to these wicked people, these, ev these evil people, guess what? Evil is, st we still have evil. It doesn't go away like that. We can only physically battle the representatives of evil. So as a nation, for instance, we can go on and fight Hitler, but 
he's just a representative. He's not the source of all evil. So when Hitler is off the table, we still have evil around the world. Why? Because evil cannot be defeated with swords. It can't be defeated with guns, boxing gloves. It can't be defeated with laws. And it cannot be defeated with protest either. Let me give you an example. How long has murder been considered evil? Ever since the beginning, right? Genesis. <laughs> it's been considered evil. How many laws do we have against murder? A lot. We got a lot of laws against murder. So why is murder not stopped? We've stopped murderers, right? We've stopped a lots of thousands of murderers, but murder itself hasn't stopped. Laws are only effective if people submit to them. So why don't people submit? Let me ask this. Someone who's representing evil, why don't they submit to laws? If they did, they would no longer represent evil evil would they evil is just simply too powerful for any weapon that mankind can create because evil didn't start with man it's not governed by man that makes sense we didn't start it we can't govern it we can only be slaves to evil evil starts with satan and we'll find that in genesis chapter 3. so the question is actually what weapon can defeat satan and his power of evil let me show you Let's take a look in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10. We see a man named Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus is a chief tax collector at this time. Tax collectors were known thieves and hated by the taxpayers. Zacchaeus wasn't just the chief tax collector. Tax, tax collectors were thieves. So Zacchaeus was actually the chief thief. Zacchaeus was definitely considered evil. Now, in that same passage, Zacchaeus had an encounter with Jesus that changed his life. So rather than remaining a thief, Jesus actually made Zacchaeus into a new person. So this new person, this reformed thief, repaid four times what he had stolen from others and gave away half his wealth to the poor. What kind of thief does that? I'll tell you, it's a thief who has repented and put his trust in Jesus Christ. Zacchaeus' evil nature was thus defeated in the spiritual war. No sword was drawn. No boxing gloves were used. No gun was pulled out. When we look at Paul in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 through 9, and Acts chapter 22, verse 1 through 11, we see the evil of Paul at the time. His name was Saul. He was going by the name Saul at the time. And we see his evil. We see his encounter with Jesus that permanently changed his life as he changed from Saul to Paul. And rather than continuing to persecute the church as he was doing, he became their most vocal advocate. Okay. Paul's evil nature was defeated in the spiritual war. So both Paul and Zacchaeus, they could have been or should have been arrested and brought to justice for their crimes. You or I probably would have chosen to assault uh, Paul or even Zacchaeus uh, for harming the, our, us and even our loved ones. For example, uh, if we're living back at that time, Zacchaeus is taxing my mama this much, but she only makes this much. Well, now my mama's in debt and he's done the same thing to me. Well, I, I, I'd hurt this guy, right? Or Paul, as he was Saul going around persecuting the church, he was putting church folks, believers, Christians in jail and seeing to their death. This is what Paul was doing. So once again, you're putting my family in jail. Now we can't eat. Now we have no place to live. Oh, yeah, yeah. My kind of justice would have assaulted Paul. My kind of battle against Paul would have used a sword would have used a gun, would have used something of the physical nature. But all my solutions would only have suppressed their evil. It would not have cured their evil. Jesus used the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. You see that in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. And with that sword, he cured Paul and Zacchaeus of evil, wiped out their evil natures. They were no longer slaves to their own desires, but they were new creations in Christ. We see that in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. 
So this is the spiritual war that I'm talking about. This is the war that we're actually faced with, where the representatives of evil don't just, uh, we don't just punish them with the law, which only suppresses their evil. What I mean by suppressing their evil is you're literally just holding back everything, all their evil impulses, you're holding it back with whatever you can. And with whatever you can, if it weakens at all, that evil will overrun you. It's like trying to hold a, a beach ball underwater. If you let let up even a, a, sm a smidgen, that ball is going to explode upwards for all to see. That's what I mean by suppressing evil. The law only suppresses evil, but the representative of evil in this spiritual war is cured from that evil with the word of God. There's no more suppression because the evil has been eliminated. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10 through 13. It reads, Finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against uh, the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Let's make sure we're clear on this. Back when I read this as a kid, put on the full armor of God, I always imagined that that armor, what it would look like or what it would be made of. And I thought, okay, the strongest substance I can think of is steel. And then I got a little older and realized mm, it might be titanium. And then I, you know, I'm a nerd, so I'm in a comic book. So then I thought, huh, wouldn't it be cool if it was vibranium? You know, the same metal that's in Wakanda? Or what if it was adamantium, the same element that Wolverine's claws are made of. That would be so amazing. But no matter how strong that metal is, all it does is protect you from flesh and blood. It does not protect you from what this verse says, which it says against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, spiritual forces of evil. The spirit is not encompassed, it's not entombed, it's not restricted by the flesh, okay? So this is what Zacchaeus realized when his heart changed after his encounter with Jesus. He was on the losing side of the war because his focus was his earthly wealth, okay? So in his mind, he had all this earthly wealth and he acquired it through evil means, through stealing, okay? But in his mind, he was winning some war against his own poverty or just his own self-worth, whatever it may be. But he was losing the spiritual war, okay, until he met Jesus and it changed his heart. This is what Paul realized as he was attempting to eliminate the Christian faith. Paul was choosing law over love. And if Paul actually understood the law or understood God for that matter, he'd understand how much bigger, how much more important love was than the law. Matter of fact, love is the fulfillment of the law. Paul didn't understand that. So he too, at that point, was on the losing side of the spiritual war until Jesus came to him and changed his life, made him into a new person. So folks, basically, we've got to make sure we're wearing this spiritual armor, this the full armor of God, or we will not be able to stand against evil when it comes our way. This is also why Stephen was able to forgive the murderers in Acts 7, 59 through 60. These weren't just murderers. These were his murderers. They were stoning him. It reads, while they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he fell asleep. Stephen figured this out. I'm afraid at this point in time, unless Jesus was in my heart, I would not have been able to figure this out. Okay. I, I, I would have, many of us, not just me, many of us would have tried to catch those rocks and throw them right back at the people throwing them at us. Right. Many of us would have turned this into a rock fight rather than just a stoning. Okay. We would have, we would have cursed the people who were stoning us. We would have made sure, look here, God. Okay. I'm about to die. 
make sure you take names here. All these people here, they're stoning me. You make sure you remember them because when, when the end of times comes, take them out. I want lightning to strike them, not now, but right now. Mm, nah. Stephen knew where the fight was and the fight wasn't there during his stoning, during his death. It wasn't the people stoning him. It wasn't the rocks themselves, but, but these people were under the control of evil. And Stephen knew that. They were just being controlled by evil. They were representing evil. So how do you stop evil? which is a spiritual force. Do you use guns, swords, tanks, boxing gloves? What do you use? Or do you use the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God? Once again, Ephesians 6 verse 17. So I'll ask again, do you know where the fight is? When you see people who are representing evil by doing evil things, can you see them and offer them the one cure for their enslavement, which is the gospel of Jesus? Don't hear what I'm not actually saying. If someone is about to assault you or your loved one, that person needs to be stopped and incarcerated, period. But that person also needs to be prayed for, okay? Because they were attempting to make you a victim just like they themselves are a victim. They are a victim because they're representing the spiritual forces of evil. They've already been made a victim by this evil and the victims of that evil can only make more victims. They can only create more victims. So they can only, that evil that they're representing can only go outward, flow outward and make other people's victims of that very same evil that's controlling them. In these kinds of spiritual confrontations, you might win a physical battle, okay? You might be able to stop them with your boxing gloves or a gun or a sword, but if that's your focus, you're gonna lose the spiritual war. If you lose a spiritual war, you've lost everything. Everything you're trying to protect won't even matter in the end. So you lose a spiritual war, you got nothing. Now, if we lose physical battles, like we see Paul, for instance, Paul lost a lot of physical battles, uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 24 through 27, and ultimately he, he was beheaded, okay? But we have to learn to be content with God and win the spiritual war. That's it. We need to have faith in our God that this spiritual war, which is raging right in front of us that we can't see, it's being handled with the sword of the spirit, the word of God himself, okay? Take your word of God and you make sure you are leading every battle with that sword of the spirit. Do not go in there with your own guns blazing and boxing gloves and a sword. Don't go in there with all that. Don't go in there with your protests around the block or in the city streets. Go in there with your sword of the spirit and you connect the word of God with whomever is representing evil. And they'll either accept it or reject it. If they accept it, they will become a new person and you might be shocked to see what the result is like with Nicodemus. Again, what chief thief, okay, repays four times everything he's stolen from people and gives half his wealth to the poor? They don't do that. Not unless they've been changed by Jesus Christ himself. And that's only through the word of God, the sword of the spirit. If they do not change, if they do not accept the word of God, their punishment is going to be a lot worse than anything you can ever do to them think on these things. I want to thank everybody for joining me today. Stay tuned for the next video.